You may have seen historical sewing books where a pattern is offered as one size on a grid. These three books, for example, are some of my regular resources, and they all include patterns featured in the system. When I first began sewing a couple of years ago now, working with patterns like these really intimidated me because I had no idea where to begin with transferring a pattern from a grid. That's why I wanted to make this video to show you all a simple method for transferring a pattern, so that you can work with books like these and have even more patterning opportunities available to you. Before we begin, I wanted to share a quick announcement. I've just released my very first pattern for purchase. I've been undergoing the journey of taking patterns from antique garments in my collection, and I've just finished my very first one. Part of why I'm also making this tutorial is as a resource for anyone that buys my patterns because each of my patterns is one size, the original size of the antique, and it's on a grid. I do, however, include extremely detailed instructions and step-by-step -step construction photos along with the pattern, so it's a little bit extra than just the pattern itself. I wanted to keep the price of the pattern as affordable as possible so that way it can be even more accessible to everybody, with an option to leave a tip for those who have the means to. I will be continuing to release patterns throughout the year, and my very first release, which you can now purchase through the link below, is one for a gorgeous late Victorian cape. So how do we begin with transferring a pattern from a grid to life-size paper? You're going to need some dotted or marked paper. You can mark your own measurement lines as well, every inch going in both directions, but pre-marked paper just makes the process less time-consuming. I always choose one inch by one inch marked paper because the majority of these gridded patterns use inches as the measurement. You'll also need a pencil and pen. I'm using a pen solely here for this example so you can all see what I'm doing. And finally, you'll need some measuring tools. Here I just have a straight ruler, but a French curve can also come in handy. So I randomly drew up this pattern just as a generic shape. It isn't actually a real pattern, so please don't try to make it yourself. It will not make any sense and it will not turn into anything. First, I take a look at my scale, and whatever book you're working with will usually tell you what scale it is. This is one to one, which means every one inch on my pattern grid is equal to one inch on my paper. I start by seeing where any straight lines are and begin working from there. Here on this right edge, we have a straight line. I've made sure that my paper is large enough to accommodate the entire pattern so that way I don't end up off of the page. I'm just counting now from top to bottom where this line starts and adding an extra inch or two so that way I know I have enough room to draw the top. Then I'm counting how many squares or inches long this straight line is, and I'm marking a point at both the top and bottom. For the points that are between inches, I'm just seeing how close they are to the halfway or one fourth inch point and marking a dot accordingly. Then I start to work the curves. I decide to either look at the vertical or horizontal lines to draw the curves, and I mark a point at the in-between spots, again, estimating how close they are to the one half or one fourth inch points, and just carefully counting. It can help as well to go in and first mark where the marks on exact inches are, and then fill in the gaps with the in-between points. For instance, here and here we have points that are on actual inch marks. Once I've marked the dots, I usually go in and fill in the actual line. Now that this curve is done, I move on to just a simple line, which is another straight one that follows along exactly with the inch marking here. And this process continues until I finish the entire pattern. Just to show you how everyone makes mistakes, I actually ended up not being able to match up the bottom of the piece because something in my counting was off. I just kept rechecking my work to get the start and end point to match up until finally, in the end, this worked. I think the key with this is to just be patient and meticulous with your counting because eventually you'll be able to match up the points if you go back and try to see where a mark may have been missed. And that's essentially the entire process. It's fairly intuitive, but it does require some practice and training your eye to recognize where the points will go. Luckily, the more you do it, the easier it will become. If you'd love to learn how to cartridge pleat the easy way, be sure to watch this video next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks for another video.